So in addition to the tar balls and the strings, there's also uh, tar mats offshore. And in one case, there was one that was estimated to be as big as the state of Rhode Island. The issue is that there were a number of technologies that could have evaluated and plotted on maps these subsurface layers that are the crude oil offshore. And they actually did some test runs for BP, and then BP dismissed them. So I was getting telephone calls saying, you know, we have this technology. If you have some money, we could actually implement it for the nonprofit organizations. Well, of course, we didn't have that kind of money. But there was a method to actually identify where all these plumes were subsurface in the Gulf, how big they were, how long they were, and plot them out. And yet, no one made BP implement that, so we would know exactly where these subsurface deposits were. And so every time we have like a, a really strong weather front or a hurricane or a tropical depression, large quantities of that subsurface crude move onshore and are deposited along the beaches and in the marshy areas. And again, these fishermen that go out, and fish and crab and shrimp in these areas, start pulling up the residues from that mixed with the seafood. As of today, the crude oil and the tar balls and the mats and the strings still wash on shore every single day. And when we have a really bad weather front, large quantities are washed on shore. So the dispersant corexit was used to disperse the crude that, one, came to the surface in the Gulf as a slick, and it was applied primarily by airplane. And then corexit was also put right at the wellhead, and it was supposed to be mixing with the crude as it flowed out of the wellhead on the floor of the Gulf of Mexico. After EPA asked them to come up with less toxic alternatives, and they contended that there were less toxic alternatives, but they weren't available. There wasn't enough available to treat the crude oil that was still flowing to the surface. They continued to use the core exit, and even after the well had stopped flowing, there was still slick on the surface of the Gulf, so it was applied there. I kept getting phone calls the whole time the well was flowing from workers on other rigs that they were being sprayed with Corexit and that they were being made very sick. So I would call the appropriate agencies and they would call me back and say, we don't spray where there are people. We don't spray where there are mammals. So no one is supposed to be being sprayed. And then the next night or the night after, I get a call again from these same people saying, we're working on the rigs in that general area, and we're getting sprayed. So it continued to be sprayed offshore as long as there was a slick on the Gulf. And then huge quantities were supposedly not sprayed inshore in the coastal areas. But yet I had so many phone calls from people that said it was being sprayed. The workers would go out and identify large deposits in the marshes. And then they were pulled back. And then the next time they went in a few days, it was all gone. And the only way it could be all gone was if it dispersed and if it had been sprayed with the dispersant. So there were a huge number of people in the coastal areas that were made very, very sick from the dispersant and the crude oil. And when the crude was a slick on the surface of the Gulf of Mexico, the strong winds and the high waves changed it into an aerosol, sort of like a pump hairspray, and it blew on shore as far inland as a hundred miles. So all the people in Louisiana and Mississippi and Alabama and the panhandle of Florida were being impacted by this aerosol that was blowing on shore. Respiratory problems, coughing, headache, and the agencies were denying that that was happening. And I was receiving just huge quantities of phone calls from these people. And then I'd start receiving them from uh, parents who had like a newborn 
that was a preemie and they were going like, and ever since we brought the baby home, the baby's been real sick. We've been sick. You know, I said, okay, I can tell you what the situation is. You've got to make a decision whether or not you move out of the area or you continue to live in the area. So there were all these health impacts being documented over and over and over again. And yet the agencies just did not care to have to address that. 